Another way I can show you the conservation of angular momentum is by sitting on this low friction stool. It's the one we just used. You can see it's got nice frictionless bearings on it or low friction bearings on it. it spins for a long time. So if I sit on that, then I will be an isolated system because the bearings low friction, very little external torques are applied as I spin around. All right, so here I am. And what I'm going to do is hold this heavy weighted bike tire uh, or bike wheel in the air and spin it up. Okay, so that will be above my head spinning here. Let's see, like that, and I'll be holding on to the knob or whatever. And the point is, it's going to have a big angular momentum. Now, and what I'll do, the reason I have this glove on, is I'll stop it. And we'll have to think about what's going to happen. We're an isolated system here, so the angular momentum has to be conserved. All right, so. We're going to stop the wheel, and then what's going to happen? Okay, so let me hop up here. All right, let's see. So I've got my wheel here, and I'm going to spin it up really fast. Well, let me try that again. There we go. So now isolated system, and I'm going to stop it. You ready? And you can see, I started rotating the same direction that the wheel was rotating, because the angular momentum has to stay the same. We can do something a little bit, well, different, but similar, is we can realize right now there's zero angular momentum. So if I start spinning it, let's see, this way, we would seem to have to have me go the other way to keep the angular momentum zero. So let's try that. I'll start spinning it this way. And I applied a little torque to myself to make that happen. And then we stop. It's always conserved for an isolated system.